Hey man, so I finally finished it. This is my video on my LED light build. These LED light fixtures are running six PCB boards with 336 diodes on each one. They are roughly around 800 watts. Now I have put directions in this video at all of the title spaces where I've typed in what I've done, but I will be giving a running commentary here and there about pitfalls that I came across and things you wanna watch out for when you build something like this. Now all the credit for these boards goes to Ohm's Law from Instagram, so I've dubbed them Ohm's Boards, and I wanna personally thank him for his design. They are brilliant and they work beautifully. As for most of everything else, it came from Home Depot, all of the screws and bolts and that kind of stuff, all from Home Depot. The things that were more niche, like the Sonoff and the IEC plugs, those ones came off of Amazon. And then all of the metal I sourced, and I highly recommend doing this, is finding a local supplier. It was by far cheaper than Home Depot. They had better quality product, and they cut it for you. Be advised, however, some of the cuts were legitimately a quarter inch off, so check their cuts. So I had to go through and make sure I matched all of similar length to pipe together to make sure I didn't get any flex or bowing or miss the pipe when I drilled and had any future problems with the fixture. I'm a big fan of these plugs, these IEC plugs. They're just standard power cord plugs. You can find them at any electronic store. They're used for tower computers. Getting with the inlets on those too so that I could turn off the fixture from the actual source itself. When I need to do stuff, move it, whatever it is. I like the option of being able to remove the power cord also, which makes it very convenient for me. It's just one of the small things that I like that I put in when I build my fixtures. And if you're using push connects, solid core wire is the way to go. And I lied before, I did get this flat aluminum bar from Home Depot just because it was a last minute change and I needed it quick. With that correction, the rest of these did come from the industrial metal supplier. I'll be using the one inch square aluminum to mount the PCBs to in sets of three. So it'll be two PCBs per set of three all together. And then those will all go into one of these C channels and be mounted as one giant fixture with three modules and six PCB boards all together. Now you can see that I have numbered the bars that is based on the correlating lengths. Each one is paired with similar lengths. So at the end, that's a full fixture and that fixture should be and have all the pieces very similar, maybe a millimeter off instead of being quarters of an inch off. So the reason I'm doing this next part is to get an inset from the C channel and the PCB. I wanna know where I'm gonna be laying those PCBs, where's the absolute outside of the area that I can put it to. I don't want a problem later where I go and put the C channels on and then try to put the PCB boards on and I can't get them on because I mismeasured. So I wanna make sure that I have some sort of an inset to protect me against that and give me a little wiggle room. Now my goal here was to make sure that the PCBs were absolutely even, that the bars were absolutely even, and that the PCBs were inset just slightly from the bar so there wasn't any overhang of the PCBs. Then you just go through and you mark the holes. And then I put a letter to pair which two bars went together for the individual module. I chose to hand tap this part. You can just use a drill, that's fine. I just think the quality of a hand tap is better. And then I also know which ones I find to be questionable. And then at the very end, I can go put a few screws in to make sure that those questionable ones still fit. And once I know that everything works out, we can just move on to the next step. Now, I forgot to talk about these at the beginning. I don't even know if I had them at the time when I did the original supplies. These are just a waterproof gland wire connector junction box. I'm using them to connect all three drivers into this and get one lead out to make it easier for myself. I used these and I decided to tap them into the bar across to make everything nice and clean looking. I also use nuts. You can decide to do one or the other. I just went with the double duty to make sure. And while I was doing that, I decided to just go ahead and mark and drill out the space for the other project box. So for this next part, I am marking out where I'm gonna be drilling holes for the potentiometer to be mounted and for the DC leads from the driver to go through so that I can mount them to the ohms board. So I do wanna make a note that I built all five of these boards at once and recorded all of it and then compiled all the footage into showing you how I manufactured one of them so that some of the footage you'll see things that I haven't explained yet. I'll explain it later and I'm trying to make it into an order that made sense as far as the building of the video goes. So bear with me.
So on this next part, the first time I tried to put the grommet in, the metal was too thick for it. So I had to make a little bit of a bigger diameter indentation around the hole so that the grommet would fit well. It actually sits very nicely recessed, almost level with the metal itself. And I want to do that so that I'm not accidentally fraying the insulation around the wires and exposing the wire to the metal. Now I used the flat bar as my stencil so that I could make sure I did the right distance of holes. And then I drilled those out, put those on all the square aluminum bars and then marked them. And then I start drilling out those so that every single one is uniform, even if I was a little off in my measurement um, and drilling the original stencil holes, which seemed to, to have happened. Now what I want to do is mount the boards with the number six screws to the square aluminum so that I can have individual modules. So when I put them in the C channel, I know what distance that I'm shooting for to get the even spread that I'm looking for. And the way I screwed these in was I used the number six screws and put them in just a little bit so that I had a little bit of wiggle room, put them all in and then drilled them down. Not super tight, but tight enough to make a really good secure hold. And because all of those are tapped, they hold pretty damn well. And then I just do that for every single one. So at the end, I end up with 15 sets. So each one's correlated by their number together. And then I can just move on to the next step with every board ready to go. So now we move on to the next step. And that is to drill out pilot holes when I have all of my measurements, the right spacing where I like them on the C channels. So I know where I'll be drilling out so I could put those quarter inch screws in. I also do it at the same time. I, you can see I laid down with nothing on it, just that silver bar that I already made the holes in the middle of the aluminum, square aluminum. And then I will drill into those and have pilot holes so I know where I will be drilling out to mount the flat aluminum bar to the middle of it. And that'll give me extra support, plus a nice way to mount all of my drivers and my project boxes to get a nice clean line for all of my wires to go through. Now I take those C channels and put them in the drill press and using the pilot holes to tell me where to drill, I make sure that I could fit the quarter inch screw in there. And I do this to all 10 fixtures so that I have a progression of steps of manufacturing these so that each fixture is on the same step and I don't have to build one fixture at a time because it helps me stay organized this way. Now we're moving right along and we gotta put those C channels back on. You wanna make sure you had marked what side was up, down, left, and right, so that when you put the modules back into the C channels, all the holes line up so you're not searching for which ones go where. It makes it a lot easier, trust me. Now after you get all these screws in, you're pretty much done with the fixture assembly and it's just down to the wiring. Now one thing I did off screen and I did it later when I rethought about it was I flipped the screws around so the caps were on the other side to give me a little bit of distance. If I ever laid the light flat on the ground or against a wall, I could have a gap between the diodes and whatever they're leaning against. So something I did later off screen was replaced all of these circled screws with eye hooks because it made it easier to just use. It was more convenient. I didn't have to drill any extra holes and it gave a pretty balanced um, distribution of weight for the light fixture so it rests pretty well when hanging. So I must have not recorded myself putting on the flat bar to the fixture, but you get the picture. Quarter inch screws, nuts, easy to imagine. Now I just take one driver and I go through all the fixtures and I mark out on the flat bar where I will be drilling out to mount the drivers to. Now another piece of footage I don't seem to have is me drilling out the marks I just made, but I did. And now I'm using number six screws and nuts to mount the drivers to the aluminum bar on the top side of that bar. Now you can mount the drivers to the bottom side of the fixture and it'll give you a low profile fixture, but I didn't like the idea of the weight of the drivers being held by just a nut and a bolt. So I take the two closest drivers and run them into the junction box. I will strip them of the rubber insulation to expose the wires. You want a lot of wire exposed, but you also want to make sure that rubber insulation goes all the way through the gland also. 
The reason you want a lot of wires is because you want some play when you put the wagons on later. The furthest forever away is gonna need a little extension, so I went to Home Depot, bought a few feet of just raw 16 gauge wire, insulated in some rubber sheeting, attached it using an electrical sleeve coupler, and then ran it underneath the middle driver that's up on risers so that I can attach it to the black land box with the other drivers and have one cord coming out of there. Now you take your measurement of where that extension wire hits the gland fitting and you strip the rubber insulation off to expose the wires like before. And then you wanna strip the ends so that all of the wires are exposed so you can connect them to the Wagos. Now with all the wires stripped, you wanna connect them all in the Wagos with the browns, the black, the blues to the white, and the greens together. Now you can just stuff all those wires back in because you'll be working with them in a second when you run the wire from the brain over to this box to give all of the drivers power. Now we have to wire up these IEC inlet plugs and it's very easy because they have these little tabs on them that fit the flat wire connectors, very snug. And so you just crimp them onto the end of each wire, find the corresponding symbol you have the ground symbol, you have the N, so the green's on ground, the white's on N, and the power outlet goes to the rocker switch, and then another black one on the other tab from the rocker switch will go off to be your live wire. So a few things that I try to do is make sure all the wires were even. I try to heat shrink all the stuff to make sure I have a nice good connection and solid. I've had some of those wire connectors slip out. You can solder them if you want. I chose not to, but that's an option. All right, one done, let's see the rest. Now we're done. So let's go ahead and measure out the size of this and then draw it onto the project boxes so we know what size piece we're cutting out of this box. We wanna make sure that we do it exactly so it's nice and clean, it fits nice and snug. It will be drilled in, so it's not a matter of wiggling around, but I don't want gaps on the outside to make it look ugly. I want something that looks nice, clean, and professionally done. At this point, just use whatever tool you have to cut it out. I had a Dremel available. I didn't like using it because the round blade to get that corner pieces, I had to go extra far and it gouged out a little extra line. It makes it look kind of shabby and not the greatest and I'm kind of disappointed about it. Next time I'll try to find a tool that's better at cutting perfect squares. So once you get the cut all the way through, make sure you just pop that thing out, test to make sure the IEC fits. If it doesn't, you can sand it down or cut it a little bit bigger. After that, make sure that the sauna fits inside the box that you chose, and it does because that's where it's gonna be going. Now you're gonna need to drill out for the gland fitting that runs the power wire from the sawn off or just from the IEC plug all the way to the junction box with the drivers. Now I will say you could probably just use one junction box, but it was for me easier to get two so I could do all the drivers in one. So if anything happened to them, I could easily remove it and then have all of the power in another one. And that was the way I chose to do it, but you could do it any way that your little heart desires. Now that everything's cut, you can just use a little rubbing alcohol to remove that Sharpie to get a nice clean look to it. Which is funny advice because I forgot to do it to the aluminum pieces after I assembled everything so they're all still marked with their correlating letters and numbers. Now I drilled in taps to mount the IEC plugs with the number six screws. I did the tapping because I found it more convenient than trying to get a nut on there to secure it. And since you already drilled out on the aluminum bar where the project box is going to be, let's go ahead and mount it using those quarter inch screws and lock nuts. So 
So the only thing I didn't like and I couldn't figure out a way around it was the driver in the back that had the extension had to just be pushed around the project box. This is where you take another extension wire and run it from the black driver's junction box over to the main brain box, remove the rubber insulation on both sides and connect them to the rest of the wires. At this point after I stripped the wires is when I would connect to the sawn off, but because I wasn't in the growing location and couldn't get it connected to their Wi-Fi from where I was, all I wanted to do was test the light so I put the two port Wagos on so I could plug it in, turn it on, and make sure everything functioned correctly. All that's left is to just seal up that box, all the wires are ready to go, and we're done. So let's plug it in and see how this bad boy tests. So, looking pretty good. Here's the final product, kind of. The potentiometers I didn't have at the time and they came later and the holes that I drilled were too small for them, so I gotta redo that. But for the time being, I just attached them so that I had the dimming capability, but they're just hanging there. It doesn't look great, but that will be fixed in the future. So that's it, that's the end of it. Um, I will be putting out another video of what actual wattage they're drawing at what point. I know their max is seven amps that they're pulling and they are pulling around 800 watts. I need to get a numbers video out of the numbers that they're drawing and the par that they're throwing out. But the plants seem to love it. These fixtures specifically are a 3500 Kelvin and a 2700 Kelvin, and the plants seem to like it. I wish I put a little bit more blue in there instead of the 27s. I should have done a 4000 Kelvin and just kept it even towards more towards the middle spectrum but these were built as a flower light and not a veg light we just happen to be starting the first run with these once we get a perpetual grow down they'll just be over some flowers but the plants love them they're doing great they are right next to some cmhs on the other side right behind my back in this video and we'll see what they do comparatively against each other because i'm curious to see what these boards can really push out Also, the coolest thing about it is the fact that I have complete control over each individual light or all lights at once. Check that out right from my phone, from anywhere in the world. Those sonoffs are amazing. I know Green Jean just put out some stuff that's really awesome that I wish I had found before I started building these, but I will in future builds attach those so I can dim everything all at once because that is a very, very neat feature. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned. I will try to give you updates on everything that's happening with them and the progress and some more actual data on the lights themselves. See what they're covering over that 3x3 if the spread that I used was good enough. But uh, that's future. I'm just glad I got this out. I know it took a while, but thanks for joining me, guys. Remember, grow it funky, keep it fresh. Peace.